Yeah, so here is the link. Okay. So in week seven, you are introduced to inner product spaces, right? So what is first a dot product? What is length? What is the angle between two different vectors? And what is an inner product space? So you have in, you have been introduced to these terminologies in week seven, right? So now, since we already know what is an inner product space, now we are going to look at one important concept in inner product, which is orthogonality. Okay. So how are we going to do that? Let's see. So the topics we are going to cover here are orthogonality and linear independence, orthonormal basis and Gram-Schmidt process, and then projections and orthogonal transformations and rotations. Okay. So first we'll quickly uh, recall some basic things of inner product space. So first, what is dot product in Euclidean space of dimension n? So Euclidean space of dimension n is nothing but Rn, right? So here, what is dot product? So if you have two vectors, let us say u is this vector and v is this vector, then the dot product of these two vectors is defined in this way, right? So suppose you are having, let us say, you are having 1, comma 2 dot minus 3, comma 5. What is the dot product? Minus 3 plus, plus 10. Right? 7. Yes, so this is how you do dot product of two vectors in Rn. Okay. Then what is length of a vector in Rn? Length of a vector is nothing but norm u, denoted by norm u. And how do we define it? Square root of? Man. 1 square, u2 square. Dot product of yeah. vector with so someone is asking a doubt or yes, ma'am me is there any question ma'am yes, ma can can we say norm is the magnitude of the Fine. vector and uh, what is the length of this vector for example Re yeah, yeah someone is asking some question what is that Ma'am, ma can we norm is the magnitude of the vector? I don't hear anything. Sorry. Ma'am, can we say norm is the magnitude of the vector? Yeah, length, magnitude, everything is same. Okay. Okay. Fine. okay. Suppose you are having a negative term, for example. Now, what is the norm? It's not, nothing is changing now also. The definition root remains the same. Root 10, right? Root 1 10. square plus 3 10, square. Yes, root 10. Yeah. Okay, fine. Now, what is the relation between dot product and length of a vector? So, dot uh, square root of u dot u is nothing but norm of u. Right? So, both are giving you the same answer. u1 square plus u2 square plus etc. un square. Okay, so this is the relation between the product and length of a vector. Now, what is the angle between two vectors? Suppose you are having two vectors in Rn. What is the angle between them? It is given by theta is equal to cos inverse of yeah, u dot right. u square root of u dot product upon the norm. Yeah, so here you see that this is uh, cos inverse of u dot v by square root of norm u into norm v. You can write it in this way as well. Okay. So this is the angle between two vectors. All right. Okay. So now the definition of uh, you should mute if you are not talking. Yeah. So inner product space, uh, what is an inner product? So an inner product is a function from V cross V to R satisfying the following condition. What is V cross V, by the way? Vector space. Two vectors. Let us say. Two vectors. 
Suppose you are saying uh, having a finite set, let us say 1, 2, 3. Now, what is S cross S? Three, two, three. Sorry, one, two, three, comma, one, two, three. One, two, three, comma, one, two, three. So it's one, comma, one, one, comma, two, something like this, right? Yes, yes. Copy, sir, product number. One, comma, three, so on, so on. All this, yeah, partition. Yes. Right? So the same thing we are taking here. We are consider a function from V cross V to R. Right? For example, how we did inner product, how we did inner product, we took two vectors, right? One is from, uh, two, both are from Rn, right? So here, uh, uh, dot product is defined in this way. Same way, inner product is just a function from V cross V to R, okay? So it can be, it, it is defined if it satisfies the following conditions. What is the first condition here? It is the positivity. Positive, yes ma'am. Right, always inner product of the same element will remain positive. And it is equal to zero if and only if V is zero. Okay, and then this is linearity. Okay, so this is linearity. This and this both are linearity properties. Okay, and what about this one? Symmetry. This, symmetry. this is called a symmetry property. So if all these conditions are satisfied, then such a function is called an inner product on a vector space. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Fine. So now what is the need of inner product? Why do we need inner products? See, suppose we are following the, uh, suppose we are having a vector space. So we have seen what is the relation between two vectors in terms of linear independence, right? And we have understood the whole space using the basis and spanning set and all that. Okay. Now, the next property is that definitely we should look at what is the angle uh, length of a vector magnitude and also the angle between two vectors. These things are, again, some basic things about vectors, right? So that property we should know for any vector space. So to generalize that, okay, so this is the Euclidean distance which you usually calculate. But apart from Euclidean distance, generally inner product gives us a wide op wide range of options to define length and angle between vectors. Okay, okay. So a vector space together with an inner product is called an inner product space. Okay. So now what is now you have seen that if you have first term u plus v, then you can split. Now if you have the addition in the second, then how how will you do that? Uh, uh, it's uh, u, 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 uh, comma v. Uh, use, use third property and then first switch that right yes ma'am now you can use property two right and then you can get back v u sumit please mute yourself Ma'am. Again, similar steps. So using symmetric property, this is CV times of U. And then using property 4, this is equal to C times of V comma U. Again, using property 3, this is nothing but C times of u comma okay so linearity applies for first position as well as the second position okay fine <clears throat> then we saw what is a norm on a vector space so what is norm on a vector space norm is something which satisfies the following condition first one is called the triangle inequality So triangle inequality. 
So first property norm of x plus y less than or equal to norm x plus norm y. So this is trend inequality, right? And then you know that the scalar uh, can be taken out and here you have a modulus sign, okay? So remember whenever no, uh, uh, scalar is taken out of norm, there should be a modulus sign because norm is always a non-negative value. Norm can never be a negative value. Can magnitude be negative? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. So no, ma see that norm no, always represents a magnitude. That is why norm is a zero if and only if x is zero, and norm is always non-negative because it represents magnitude. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Magnitude in some form. Okay, not in the usual magnitude. It cannot be the same like you measure in a scale. So this is magnitude in some sense. Okay. Fine. <clears throat> okay. So now norm induced by an inner product. So how does a norm induces an inner product? Let V be an inner product space with an inner product. So you are having, oh sorry, how, how does an inner product induce a norm? So you are having some inner product. Okay. Now how to construct a norm from this inner product? You have to define it in this way. Norm V is equal to square root of inner product V comma V. That's all. Okay. So it is exactly the same definition we saw here as well. Right. Norm is equal to inner product U dot U. So whatever the properties we observe in R and that we are extending for general vector space. That's all. Right. So you see that from inner product, we can obtain the dot product. All right. Okay. <clears throat> now. So ma'am, does yeah. it mean like yeah. uh, we are taking the norm of a uh, inner product space? Norm yeah, from the inner the product. In yeah. yeah, this norm is with respect to this inner product. Yeah. Okay. Okay, fine. Now, for example, suppose you are having... What, what happens in the case of usual uh, inner product? The dot product is nothing but uh, is also called the usual inner product okay? dot product is sometimes referred to as usual inner product okay in this case you know that norm v is nothing but for example if you are considering v is r2 then norm v is equal to square root of v dot v which is square root of v1 square plus v2 square it is quite simple now suppose <clears throat> you are having some other inner product for example you are having the dot product inner product defined in this way u1 v1 minus u1 v2 plus u2 v1 plus 2 u2 v2 okay so now this is short form of inner product space i guess you know that so we are having an inner product, inner product space like this okay so now what is norm u what is the norm induced by this inner product It's u1 square plus u2 square. Here, what is u1? We are u1 v1 is nothing but u1 square. u1, u1 square, square minus u1 u2 plus u2 u1 plus 2 u2 square. Two. The whole square root, right? So this is nothing but square root of u1 square minus 2 u1 u2 plus 2 u2 square. Okay. So this is the norm induced by this inner product. Okay. Fine. This u1 and v1 are the dot product. Or I have a... Which one? This one? Yeah. Yes. So here it is not dot product. It is some other inner product we are having here. So this is just the product of two scalars. So 
and r2 this is a scalar this is all these are scalars right each individual coordinate represents a uh, scalar right <coughs> so for example in u2 are the coordinates like 1 comma 2 yeah exactly so for example 1 comma 2 and minus 1 comma 1 what is the inner product in this no in this inner product can you tell uh 1 times minus 1 yeah minus 1 minus 2 Yeah, U one. Okay, one times so one. Yeah, one. Minus two. Minus U two times V one, so minus two, and then plus two. U two V two. Four. So U two V two is four. So you have the answer minus one, plus one, plus four. So which is four? Okay. So the inner product in this uh, way is defined. And you get the answer like this. So you understand this is some inner product, okay? And this is satisfy these conditions. Yeah. In case of this uh, uh, norm of U, we take uh, U times uh, U and U. Yeah, norm is that defined is. in this way. Okay. okay? Means the same vector uh, we take two times. Yes. And take okay. the square root. In. Oh, okay. Okay, my lord. Okay. Okay, now look at this question. Consider the function f from v cross v to r, where <clears throat> v is a subset of r two, defined by f of v comma v is given like this. Now you have to verify which of the following option is true. Try to verify the first option, the symmetry condition. So you have to check whether f of v comma w is same as f of w comma v. Ma'am, for this last time, Karthik sir gave us a method. Yeah, oh, what is that? Forming a matrix of their coefficient, and yeah, if that matrix is symmetric, that. then that yeah. symmetry is satisfied. By linearity is uh, also satisfied, and we just need to check positivity. Only the problems you have already done. If you have done, then we can move to the next question. Then, ma'am, we have not done this problem, but uh, sir has given one solution to it. Similar proof is there, so yeah, we can do. Okay, fine. So this question, uh, shall we then give it as a homework then? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And the matrix will be two will zero zero five. Much time or less? Sorry. Will it take much time to solve or less? If uh, you can try. It is very simple only. See, option one, you just have to verify whether f of v comma w is same as f of w comma v. Come on. Okay, so now you have to just uh, put the terms, jumble the terms. So in place of uh, v1, you have to put w1, and in place of w1, you have to put v1. So and you have to verify in that way. So you have to check whether this condition is satisfied, and you can see that this condition is satisfied here. Okay, and same way, what is mean by bilinearity? What is bilinearity? V plus U by W will be equal yeah. to F of F of U W plus F of V W. F U W in plus V F of V W. This as well as you have to check C V. Yeah, C U. If these two properties are satisfied, then. You know that it is satisfying bilinearity. You can check that this is also satisfied for this. Map in the matrix form, it is by default satisfied. That second one, right? This one. This bilinearity one. Yeah. Okay. And the symmetry one is there if A is equal to A transpose. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And positivity condition, you can see very easily that if you just put v one squared and v two squared, you get non-negative term, positive term here, and so this is also very straightforward. So option three is f of u comma u is positive for non-zero u. That is positivity condition. Option four is also right. So if all these three are satisfied, then you know option four is correct. So option five is incorrect. Okay, I have not explicitly done the verification, but you know what is the step. What are the steps you have to do?
okay fine okay so what's the next question here yeah can i ask yeah? activity you want you want to ask a doubt from activity yes ma'am maybe at the end of the session please not in the middle of the session okay okay fine okay so this is another similar question so maybe this also we will skip all right okay so this question we can do consider two vectors a b in r3 choose the set of correct options so can you check what is norm a and if the what is inner product is not if it is not mentioned then it is understood that we are considering the usual inner product so if you are considering the usual inner product what is mean by usual inner product i already mentioned it dot product. Product. yeah <laughs> so according to dot product what is norm a norm b and norm a plus b can you calculate yes can can you can you please calculate norm of a plus b means the left one this one first yes, tell me what yes, is a plus b 0.4 plus 2 1.3 plus 3 minus 7.2 4.3 and then minus 7.2 so yes, what is now what it will be then root under 2.4 to the whole square plus 4.3 to the whole square plus minus 7.2 to the whole square so what is this calculate and tell me eight point seven seven to six point zero nine that is eight point seven two okay so then what is norm of a Square root of six point six nine. That is two point five eight six. Yeah. Norm B. Square root of thirty eight. This six point one six. Yeah. Okay. Now, what is norm A plus norm B? What is this? It's eight point seven four. So does the inequality hold? Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Why no? One is yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Right? Hold. Yes, yes ma'am. Ma ma okay. The two vectors do not satisfy triangle inequality. Obviously incorrect. incorrect okay. What about the option three, which is the Cauchy squares inequality? So you just have to verify what is the product of norm A norm B. What is product of norm A norm B? Two point six. Fifteen point nine four four or something. Fifteen point nine four four. Nine four or eight nine. Ma'am, eight nine. Fifteen point eight nine. And what is inner product K comma B? Fifteen point seven. Yeah. So now. So let us call the left hand side as equation one, and this is equation two. Now is one less than or equal to two? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma but uh, the modulus of this is going to be the same since this is positive. So you see that modulus of inner product A comma B is just fifteen point seven, and the product of norm A and norm B is fifteen point eight nine, and hence the inequality is satisfied. So this is incorrect. Okay, clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay. 
Okay, so again a similar problem once again. So these uh, things since you have already done, let us skip. Okay. Oh, ma'am, can we discuss that because the activity question also will not be able to solve this. This one? Yes, ma'am. Okay, sure. So the first one, does F satisfy the symmetric condition of the inner product? Now, what is F of W comma V? So, one can be one square. So you have one square plus W one B two square plus W two square B one. Right? Now we can just rewrite these terms just in this order. So V one square W one square plus next term you should have V two squared now. Right, so v two square, uh, sorry, v one w two square. So let's bring this term first, and this term next. Okay, so then you will have v one w two square, and also I'm changing the order of the product. Okay, so now you see that this is nothing but f of v comma w. So option one is correct. What about option two? We substitute v f of v comma v and put uh, w one equal to v one. So you have v one power four plus v one power two plus v two square v two square v one. So which is v one power four plus two times of v one v two square. Correct? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now see. We are not able to conclude anything from this. Whether it is positive or negative, we are not able to conclude this. So whenever yes. such a situation arises, you have to be careful. So you have to uh, try to first look whether you are able to prove that it is positive. So it is not very uh, clear that you will be able to prove it. So you have to try to find a, a example, counter example, such that this is going to fail. Okay. For example, what is that you have to do is that. So, for example, maybe let me take the vector v is equal to zero comma one. Okay. Usually, you try to disprove this part, which is the easier one. Norm v equal to zero if and only if v equal to zero. Norm v or inner product v comma v, anything. Okay. So you prove try to prove this because this is easier compared to inequality. Okay. So I am taking a non-zero vector and I am going to find what is f of v comma v. Now, can you tell me what is f of v comma v? Zero. Yeah. You see, it is zero square zero power four plus two times of zero into one, which is zero, right? According yes, to the positivity condition, you should have norm v comma v equal to zero if and only if v equal to zero, and this fails. So you see that positivity fails. Okay. So when you are checking positivity, you have to be careful. You also have to check this condition. Ma'am, I'm checking positivity. Yeah. Don't we have to put it in the original uh, equation, like uh, the v one square w one square that one? This one. The this one. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. If you put that also, you are going to get the same, right? V one is zero. Here also zero, okay. and here okay. w one is again zero, right? Because we are having v and v in both places. Right. Okay. Excuse so me, ma'am. We are having the yeah simplified term. It is uh, better to consider the simplified version rather than going to the complex one, right? Okay. Anyway, using that is fine. Yeah. What's the doubt? So, ma'am, we have to use any of one, one any of the one. Yeah. If you disprove any one, that is fine. But when you are proving, you have to prove both. Okay. Yes. And can you give example of an inner product in matrix form? Inner product in matrix form. Okay. Okay. Let me first just finish this. What about option three here? No. No, ma'am. False. Since positivity fails, so this is going. This is obviously incorrect. Okay. Now what option four is correct. Yeah. So this is correct. Okay. Ma'am, I didn't get the option two, sir. Can you? See, option two can uh, consist of two parts. So, option two, you see that you have to prove that inner product v comma v is positive. Always equal to zero for all non-zero elements. 
and also you have to prove inner product v comma v equal to zero if and only if v equal to zero so if you disprove one of this then the positivity will fail so i have disproved the second condition so i have taken a non zero element so this is a non zero element and i have shown that the inner product is zero so this condition fails ma'am for the positivity only the one condition na means no. greater than zero no look at the definition both satisfied both conditions are there for positivity all right okay so remember for positivity when you are proving you have to check both but when you are trying to disprove something it is okay if you prove just one of them usually ma'am any vector ma'am any vector how it can be means greater than 0 and it also equal to 0 How it is possible? And for non-zero vectors, it is positive, and for zero vector, it is zero. Okay, you understand? No, ma'am. See, for non-zero vector, <laughs> the inner product is positive, and for zero vector, the inner product is zero. What is the confusion here? Okay, got it. Got it? Okay. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> All right. So. So someone wanted in the matrix form, right? Example in the matrix form. Maybe we'll do this one, right? I guess this is the same problem you have already done in uh, not that matrix form. Uh, so in one of the questions in graded assignment, it was given that uh, m two by two and its inner product is a uh, trace of a uh, trace of the matrix like that. Ah, uh, okay. So maybe the problem is somewhere included in the later part, or we will discuss it in the end of the session. Okay. Ma'am, please take activity. Which which activity you are talking about? So this one or something or else? Seven point one. So is it some related to this topic? I'm asking. No, ma'am. Similarity. Then uh, maybe we will uh, discuss it at the end of the session. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Okay. Fine. Okay. So now the important prob uh, thing of uh, week eight we are going to see is orthogonality. See where does orthogonality come from? It comes from the property of perpendicularity. So when do we call two lines to be perpendicular? A yeah. dot B is equal to zero. Dot product is zero. Dot product is zero. So that is uh, uh, yeah. In place of dot product, yeah, it is zero. Now, what and is the yeah. is equal to minus one? If what is minus one? Slope. Product of slope. slope. Sorry. Product of slope. Okay, fine. So now that is one way. Now, uh, what is the angle between two vectors? It's ninety degree. Yeah. So literally, this is the meaning we consider in general R two. Or R three. This is what we usually see. You take two lines and see whether the intersection is having an angle ninety degree. So this is the very basic thing you see. After that, yeah, you see dot product and everything. Yeah. Okay. So now let us consider. For example, u one is one zero uh, one, and u two is one zero. So you are considering these two vectors. Now, what is the angle between these two vectors? Ninety. Ninety. Ninety degree. Now, what is the dot product of these two vectors? Zero. 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 Right. So zero into one. Zero comma zero. one. Dot one comma zero is. Zero. Plus zero. Zero comma zero. zero. Yeah. So the next thing you see is that you are having v one and v two. So you are having v one. Is this and V two is this? Okay. So now, what is the angle between these two vectors? Ninety degree. Ninety degree. Now, what is V one dot V three? Zero. Zero. Again, you see nine minus nine is zero. Okay. Next, you see you have 
W1 is minus 1, comma 2. Okay, and W2 is this vector. Now again, what is the angle between them? 90. 90. Yeah. What is the dot product of these two vectors? 0. zero. 2 minus 2, 0. So 2 minus 2, 0. Right? So you observe that whenever the, uh, in R2 at least, you can clearly see that if two lines are intersecting at 90 degree, then the dot product is zero. Okay. So in dot product, you have another way of defining what is that uh, definition of dot product in uh, terms of uh, angle between the vectors? That cos theta term will be zero. Yeah. Norm A. Norm, norm B. B into cos theta. Yes, and since length can't be zero, so cos theta yeah. has to be zero. Yeah, so if you are considering two non-zero vectors, then A dot B is zero. So for non-zero vectors, A dot B is zero if and only if cos theta is zero. And cos theta is zero when you know that theta is 90 degrees. Okay, and here, so what is the symbol we are using? So we are saying two vectors are orthogonal. Two vectors, now we are going to generalize this in terms of inner product. So two vectors in an inner product are said to be orthogonal. So instead of dot product, I'm going to put inner product, that's all. If that inner product is zero. And what is the symbol for this uh, orthogonal vectors? U perpendicular to V. So read it as u per v. So u is orthogonal to v if you have the inner product is 0. Okay, u per v. So you read this as per perpendicular, short form of perpendicular. Okay, fine. Now consider this inner product in R2. Inner product u comma v defined in this way. Now, let's check whether the vectors are orthogonal to each other. Can you calculate the inner product of these two vectors according to this definition? What is the inner product? Can you check? So, ma'am, we have to check if according to this means only they are orthogonal not to the usual one, right? Because you are specifically given what is the inner product, you have to check according to this inner product. Yes, ma'am. Ma we, if we have not uh, zero condition then we check the dot product now yes if no condition is given then, uh, yeah that is zero if no condition no inner product is defined then you can uh, check for dot product so here you see that u1 v1 is 1 u1 v2 is 0 u2 v1 is 1 plus 2 times of u2 uh, 0 0 yeah. So you have 1 minus 1, 0. Okay. So but are these vectors orthogonal with respect to the usual inner product that is the dot product? No, ma'am. So no. 1 dot 1, this is equal to 1. 1. Okay. So you see that these two vectors, let us call this u and v. So u is with respect to this inner product okay but u is not orthogonal to v with respect to dot product so you see that the same set of vectors can be orthogonal with respect to some inner product and need not be orthogonal with respect to some other inner product okay fine so, that condition is always true like uh, they can be orthogonal to some uh, inner product. Is it always true or like? No, no, uh, not necessarily. Okay. So, and then, uh, but they are actually not perpendicular. Uh, if we make it, make them in. No, they are not actually perpendicular. No. So if they are not actually perpendicular, so how means uh, we can make out they are orthogonal? Like if that we change the basis, then not only not changing basis. We are changing the definition of inner product Sorry. itself. 
because see what is happening here you understand say for example in the case of uh, definition you go back to the definition of vector spaces so in the definition of vector spaces based on the definition of addition the zero vector itself will change right the zero yes. vector yes it need not be the zero vector right same way yes, here two vectors are orthogonal means it need not be perpendicular it depends on the underlying inner product defined here you understand so here orthogonal in general means that uh, inner product uh, is zero that's all and in okay. case of dot product their angle is 90 degree and exactly. so Okay. So, ma'am, just general question that can we draw them uh, where we can draw them perpendicular? Like in R2, we can't draw them see, as a perpendicular. See, just like in, in this scenario, what happens to the case when you are considering the usual addition and scalar multiplication, you know that origin is the zero vector. But is it always possible that at origin you have the zero vector? No. So, in the same case, here you will always not be able to see what is the exact angle between two vectors given an inner product okay so forget about the angle notion completely in this case so just to start like uh, start from where this orthogonality starts we started from here now once you go go to this definition you should forget about angle between two vectors now you are in a more general setting of inner product so you forget about the notion of angle between two vectors so now you are having only inner product between two vectors okay okay fine yes sir. okay now what is mean by orthogonal set of vectors means the mutually they are orthogonal yeah so it's, you have a set of v2, vectors yeah if it's v1 have... v2 v3 are orthogonal then mm. uh, v, v1 v2 then v1 v3 will be also orthogonal with yeah. respect to v2, each v3. each pair are orthogonal yes yeah uh, yes, so yes if you take any pair from a given set and they are orthogonal then that set is called an orthogonal set okay now consider the set of vectors given here so set s is orthogonal with respect to dot product is given can you verify let us call this v1 v2 V3. And V3. Can you verify this? What is the dot product of V1, V2, V1, V2, V2 and then V2, V3? Then V1, V3. V3. So, what is the inner product? Can you verify dot product here? Can you verify? V1, V2 is one. one is zero. Okay. V2, V3 is zero. Yeah. Zero, ma'am. And V3, V1, V0. Zero. Right? So you see that this is now an orthogonal set. Okay? Fine. Yes, ma'am. Now in R2, can there be an orthogonal set of three vectors? What is your answer? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma so First let us and third will be parallel. Yeah. So let us start here. Now let us draw an orthogonal vector like this. According to dot product, we will first start with dot product. So you know that now these two are orthogonal. Now I am drawing a vector which is orthogonal to this vector. So it is going to be like this. So now, are these two vectors orthogonal? No, ma'am. No. Same way if 180 you are, degree. Yeah. Same way if you are going to take some other direction also. Suppose you are starting here. Then if you are taking this and then going back here. Then again, you see these three vectors are not orthogonal. Because these two are lying on the same line. So you if see you that. some other inner space then. Yeah. So we will come to that. So you first notice that at least in the case of dot product, it is very clear that there cannot be more than three vectors in R2. Okay. So first of all, here, let us put a no, and then we will see in general how it is true. Okay. Fine. 
it is because of this property let v1 v2 v k be an orthogonal set of vectors in an inner product space then v1 v2 v k is a linearly independent set of vectors so it means what any orthogonal set of vectors is linearly independent before looking at this proof now can you tell how many maximum how many linearly independent vectors can be there in r2 and 2 2 so in that case can there two, be three orthogonal vectors in that case no no because any orthogonal set of vectors is going to be linearly independent so it is not possible to have three linearly independent vectors in r2 okay so in any gen inner space definition yeah so in general what you can observe is that yeah that is uh, what is um, mentioned next i guess so in general what does this imply if dimension of 3 is equal to n then any orthogonal set in v can have maximum how many vectors n n n vectors yeah that is the implication from this okay now let us look at how uh, how is this uh, statement true okay fine now what is given to us we are assuming that the given set is orthogonal so it means if you take any pair then the inner product is zero now what is that we need to prove how do you prove linear independence alpha v1 plus beta v2 you are having k vectors okay. should imply alpha i is equal to 0 all the coefficients are zero right okay so let us start with summation i is equal to 1 to k alpha i v i is equal to 0 now 0 is equal to n a product of summation i is equal to 1 to k alpha i v i comma v1 let us start for v1 so why is this 0 first of all in a product uh, with a zero vector is always zero yeah so this is a zero vector and in a product with any other vector is going to be zero so now what is this now how have... that summation line you have taken to zero we have to prove that right we are going to assume this no. so we are assuming first of all. yeah so now because of bilinearity property how can we split this term remaining so, alpha i yeah alpha i we can take out okay now what is the first term in this and then you have the rest so this is b1 Ma'am, can you explain the first part of the second step? Ma'am, like a uh, norm of summation alpha i v i comma v one is equal to zero. This one? Yes, yes. The below part, below, below that. This is this, and then this is the zero vector, right? So, what do you know? Inner product of zero comma v or v comma zero is always zero, right? Yes, yes, ma'am. so using that property this is a zero vector so this i have taken as zero that's all okay clear yes ma'am okay now what do you know about this uh, inner product v2 v1 vk v1 what do you know about all this 
all of them are true yeah except the first one all the other vectors or all the other inner products are zero so you see that this is now zero sorry this is uh, not this one the first one remains the same alpha 1 vi vi is zero so these terms are zero all these terms are zero why is that because that is what is given to us when you have different i and j all the all of them inner product are going to be zero so you simply have alpha 1 into inner product v1 v1 now v1 is a non zero vector and you have zero here so what does this imply alpha 1 is zero okay same way same way if you take Vj here. So we have to fix one vector. Yeah. Yeah, we are fixing V1 and getting alpha 1, 0. Same way if you are fixing Vj for some other j, then you will see that alpha j is equal to 0. So in this way, you can see that all the alpha i's are in general 0. And hence, you see that the set V1, V2, Vk is linearly independent. Is this clear? How are the property in place linear independence? Yeah? Yes. Oh. Yes. Um, is the converse also true? No. Um, I don't understand them. So how is it like you're saying when the coefficients are zero, then uh, so that is a condition for checking linear independence when uh, some of the product of the coefficients and the vectors are equal to zero, right now? Yeah. But anyway, the inner products are zero. So why are we have why do we have to prove the uh, alphas are zero? Inner product is zero. How does that prove that all the coefficients are zero? Oh, that is what we are trying to prove here, right? Okay, ma'am. Okay, fine. So the converse is not true. Obviously, even in the case of um, dot product. See what happens to these two vectors. Let us take uh, maybe you take um, this vector, which is one comma one, and let us take you one comma zero. These two are linearly independent or not? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. But ma are they orthogonal? No. No. No, ma'am. Right? Converse is not true. Ma'am, I still so this is when we have to prove uh, linearly independent vectors. Then what we actually do is. The only way we can make another vector is a linear combination where all the coefficients are zero. Correct, ma'am? Either you do that or you prove that all the coefficients are zero. But we are not adding the vectors here, right, ma'am? We are only adding the inner products of those vectors. So I no, we are add so this is the assumption. We have taken the scalar uh, linear combination of v1, v2, v k and proving alpha one, alpha two k is zero. Okay. 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 So note, converse is not true. So for example, take any two vectors. So when inner product is not mentioned, what is understood? Dot product. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Ma'am, uh, can you give an example mm. of uh, with taking the vectors for the above proof? This one? Yes, ma'am. Uh, now, orthogonality implies independence. So take one, zero, zero, one. They are orthogonal, right? Yes. yes. And uh, and uh, hence, you know, they are linearly independent. Yes, yes. Okay. Mim, this, like this way, the alpha one and alpha two case. Mm. That what way, how? We... To... Okay. So then, alpha one one zero, alpha two zero one is zero. Now this is anyway. This is actually quite straightforward. So alpha one, alpha two is equal to 0 here this is straight for maybe let's take um, 
one one minus one one. Okay. Now they are orthogonal, right? Yeah. Orthogonal or not? Yes, my dot product is zero. So now, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to use this way. So now I'm going to uh, take that 0 is equal to uh, alpha 1. So this is V1, V2. V1, V2, comma V1. Now what is this inner product? Alpha 1, V1, V1, plus alpha 2, V2, V1. Now what is V2, V1? What is this inner product? Zero. So you will simply have alpha 1 times. What is inner product V1, V1? Two. Right? So two times of alpha 1 plus zero. So now what is alpha 1? Zero. Same way can you prove alpha 2 is zero by taking V2 here? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay, fine. Okay. So next comes the important concept called orthogonal basis. Okay, orthogonal basis are very special. Why is that so? First, we have to understand what is orthogonal basis. Okay. Okay, by the way, what is the basis? Spanning sets. We can expand uh, independent sets. Maximal yeah, maximal linearly independent set. If you are saying spanning set, you have to be very careful. You have to say minimal spanning set. Or when you are using linear independence, you have to say maximal linear independent set. Okay, otherwise it is very vague and it is incorrect also. Okay. So now what is an orthogonal basis? When the dot product zero. When the yeah. basis of yeah. Yeah, so when you have a basis which is also an orthogonal set, okay? So a basis yes, consisting of mutually orthogonal vectors is called an orthogonal basis, okay? So what do we know? We already know that basis is a maximal linearly independent set. An orthogonal set of vectors is already linearly independent. So now from these two properties, what is that you know about dimen if dimension of V is n, then orthogonal basis is nothing but orthogonal set of how many vectors? N vectors. Okay. So, can you give an orthogonal basis for Rn? The standard basis. Of course. The standard yes. Order. yes, standard basis. Dot product vision. Yeah. If V is a vector space of dimension N, then what is the maximum number of vectors in an orthogonal set of V? N. Yeah. N. Okay. Ma'am, one double. Yeah. Ma'am, so we say that inner product, uh, inner product is an vector, uh, vector space uh, means, uh, what do we mean by the sentence that inner product is a vector space by itself? Inner product is a? Is a, is a vector space by itself. Is that true? Every inner product space is a vector space, right? So ma'am, does a vector space contain an inner product space? See, inner product, we are going to construct only when you have an inner product defined on V cross V. But when you are constructing an inner product, you are building it out of a vector space. You are considering a vector space and taking the cross product and then building the inner product. Right? Yes, sir. So already a vector space is present when you are constructing an inner product space. But it is not the case when you are constructing a vector space. So it's just a... Uh, mm, just understanding the definition, that's all. Nothing more than that. Okay. So what can you say about any orthogonal set of n vectors in Rn? It forms a basis. Yes. <laughs> Okay, fine. So here are some examples. This is what we have already proved. So you see that this is an orthogonal basis in R3, 
right standard basis is something which we have already seen so we have seen that these two are orthogonal with respect to this particular inner product so this forms an orthogonal basis with respect to this inner product what is the underlying inner product is important okay yes sir i answered this question is the above set an orthogonal basis of r2 with respect to usual inner product this set no ma'am no. no, ma yeah now what is an orthonormal set what is mean by normal vector or unit vector norm is one yeah that is all for orthonormal nothing more than that so any orthogonal set For where each vector has norm one is called an orthonormal set. Okay, so you know that orthogonal means inner product V i V j is zero whenever i not equal to j. Now one more condition is there for orthonormal. That is when you are finding the inner product of the same vectors, you are having one. How does it coincide with norm one? What is norm of a vector? In a dot product, square root of a dot product. You have to talk about general inner product because we are in general inner product space. Square root of the uh, inner, product. inner product. Inner product. Oh. Length of the vector. Right. So if V i comma V i is one, we are taking positive square root here. So this is one. So norm V i equal to one is same as saying inner product is one. Okay. So norm yeah. one is same as saying inner product is one. Okay, fine. So an orthonormal basis is an orthonormal set of vectors which forms a basis. So now orthonormal basis, short form. Okay, so it is a set of orthonormal vectors. That's all, which forms a basis. Now each vector in an orthogonal ba orthonormal basis. Has norm one, correct? Right? Because it is orthonormal. An orthonormal basis is a maximal orthonormal set in an inner product space. Okay, so you already know that standard basis with respect to dot product forms an orthonormal basis, right? Yes. So orthonormal basis of inner product zero and norm one. Yeah, exactly. So it is orthogonal plus. Norm of each vector is one for all x. Okay, so ma'am, it's a unit vector. Exactly. So orthonormal. Unit vector to that inner product space. Exactly. Okay. Fine. Okay. So, for example, if you take R three, so E one. What is norm of each vector? One. With respect to usual inner product. One. One. And what is e i e j when i not equal to j? Zero. Zero. Okay. Zero. 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 They will always have to be in this form one zero zero one. Not necessarily. Okay, so for how uh, they will be unit like there if they are uh, in this dot product and usual dot product usual in our space. What is your question? Can you repeat? Ma'am, if there is the usual dot product and usual uh, in a product, mm -hmm. then this. Uh, Norm equal to one condition is only satisfied when they are in the form one zero zero and zero one one in respective R and right. Let us consider the unit circle in R two. Okay, what are all the points in the on the unit circle? How do you define unit circle? Means set of all x comma y such that x plus right. Now let us look at this definition in other way. What suppose let us call this as your vector u. Now what is norm u? 
Tell me, what is norm u? Under root of x bar 4. So can we rewrite this set as set of all u in R2 for which norm u is equal to 1? Yes, ma'am. So you see how many vectors are here? Infinite. 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 So same way in R3, you have to consider this sphere. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Fine. So all the vectors on that sphere and in that unit circle yes. are yeah, this they have normal one. basis. They, no, no. They are just having norm one. You just asked. These oh, yeah. are the only vectors with norm one. That is why I told that there are infinitely many vectors with norm one. Okay, okay not just one, zero, and zero, one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you are having now three vectors here. Let us call them V1, V2, V3. Verify S forms an orthonormal basis. So what is that you will verify? Inner product is 0 and they are orthogonal and norm is yeah. So verify mm -hmm. these things. Everyone First verify the verify that they are orthogonal set, then only we can consider. Yeah, then you have to check what is the norm of each vector. Find all this, everyone. Try this. Mom, norm will be that straight line, right? Yeah. This is the usual inner product. Okay, okay. Mom, the inner product is zero. Okay. Norm is one ma'am for each. Okay. What is the last condition you need to check for basis? It depends. Cardinality of S. Linear independence comes from orthogonality. What is the cardinality is three. Three. Should be equal to dimension of V. Right? So here it is equal to three, and hence you see that this forms a basis. So now S can you repeat why this cardinality is checked? Like what this satisfies? This condition guarantees orthogonality. Right now, this condition gives normality, so this both gives orthonormality. Now, this condition tells you that yes, is a basis. So, now this two combined will give you orthonormal basis. Okay. Um, uh by using this thing dot product can we uh, check if a given set of vectors are li linearly independent or dependent yes like we were doing in a vector space earlier yes we can but it is very rare that they are orthogonal uh, to check linear independence to check orthogonality is a very rare thing but yeah it is possible uh, orthogonality no. to prove orthogonality it is linear independence but it is not that if it is not orthogonal it is not linearly independent that is not true Okay, fine. Okay. Okay. So now how to obtain... Sorry, sorry, ma'am. You just yes. said if it, if it is not orthogonal, it doesn't mean that they are linearly independent. How, how, how is it meant? For example, I already gave an example uh, for this. So, need not be... It, it does not mean that it is not linearly independent. So, for example... I'm considering this vector with respect to dot product. Are they orthogonal? No. But are they linearly independent? Yes. Yeah. 
So, so not auto, not not autonomous does not mean that they are not linearly independent. Okay. 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 So how do you obtain an ortho normal set from an orthogonal set? So suppose you are given a set of orthogonal vectors, then obtaining ortho normal set is very simple. You just have to divide each of the vectors by norm of mm -hmm. the. Vector. Then what happens? Then what happens if you divide by the norm of the vector? Suppose you are having some vector b, and you are having norm b in the denominator. Now what is norm of the unit vector in that? Yeah. Now this is a scalar. Now this is a scalar. So this scalar you can bring it out, and inside you will have norm b. Now what is this equal to? One. One. So for any non-zero vector. Norm of v by norm v is always one. Okay, so that is why to uh, create a non-zero uh, no, ortho normal vector from an orthogonal set, you just have to divide it by its norm so that each vector has norm one. Okay, is that clear? How we are obtaining ortho normal set from orthogonal set? Ma'am, in normal definition, yes, like we can say dividing by its magnitude. Yeah. To get that unit in that same direction. Yeah. Ma'am, sorry. Regarding the previous one, where you said like when they are not uh, orthogonal, they can be still linearly independent. Yeah. But uh, is the reverse true always, ma'am? If they are linearly independent, are they always orthogonal? No. No. Okay. This itself is again the same example, right? Okay. Now convert this into orthonormal uh, basis. One over two, ma'am. Both divide by root ten. Yeah. The root. Just write the answer. But ma'am, in the lecture video, uh, professor said that uh, now when we check for orthogonality, it is also a check for linearly independence. Right? Then what is that, ma'am? Yes, know. orthogonality implies linear independence. That is what we proved in the beginning. And then why in this previous thing it was not working? You are talking about the not orthogonality. Uh -huh. Yes, ma'am. Orthogonal implies linear independence, but not orthogonal does not imply not linearly independent. Okay, 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 ma'am. Okay. So what is the answer here? What are the set of vectors? First of all, is the given set orthogonal? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. What is norm u? Root ten. Norm v. Root ten. Root ten. So simply divide by root ten. Okay, now this forms an orthonormal basis. Now, what is the importance of orthonormal basis? We have constructed orthonormal basis. We have seen what is that and seen how to construct it from ortho orthogonal set. Now, what is the importance of it? What is the advantage of having an ortho orthonormal basis? Okay. So, suppose uh, in the case we are having, you just go back to week um, three and four. Suppose you are having some basis. Okay, so for example, maybe you have, for example, this is one basis for R two, right? Now suppose you are having some element three comma four. Now how do you write three comma four as a linear combination of V one and V two? We will have to do some work. So you have to solve the system of linear equations, right? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yes. Now, it is not the case when this v one and v two are orthonormal. Let us see how. 
Suppose let us say S is an orthonormal basis of an inner product space. Okay. And let V be some element from V. Now you know that since it is a basis, you can write this V as a linear combination of the elements of S. Right. Now how do we find C1, C2, C and in general? So if we are yeah. We solve the system of linear equation, right? We get this by solving system of linear equation. But now we know that S is orthonormal. So how are we going to use this? So in that case, you don't have to compute this CIs individually. Your CI is very simple. It is simply inner product V comma VI. How? How is this so? How it is so simple? Again, just by the definition of inner product only. Okay. So how do we prove this? Ma'am, does the orthonormal basis also form uh, is also the basis of vector space? Sorry, just give me a minute. <coughs> Yeah, sorry for the uh, interruption. <clears throat> yeah, so we were seeing how this uh, coefficient can be written in this way. Okay, so let us start with V. So what is V? V is this expression C1 V1 plus C2 V2 plus etc c and v n and and then and then you have v i so you have now if you take the if you apply bilinearity here what do you get you can take out the coefficients yes C2, V2, VI, plus etc. Cn, Vn, Vi. Now, what do you know from the orthog orthogonal property? In a product, Vi, Vj. Zero, Ij. And if they are equal to equal, then you know it is one. So you know that it is going to be equal to Ci times of 
in a product vi vi other things are going to be view and in a product vi vi is just ci right so do you understand yes. how did we yes. get ci is equal to in a product v comma vi yes yes yeah okay yes so whenever you are having an orthonormal basis finding the coefficients you simply have to calculate in a product v comma vi okay fine now consider yeah ma'am i was asking if uh, is the orthogonal basis a basis for the vector space also yes orthonormal basis means yeah it is a basis for the vector space okay fine consider two vectors a and b in r5 now choose the correct options are a and b orthogonal what is a dot b yes ma'am zero so this is correct now what is a minus b minus 1 minus 2 minus 1 minus 3 sorry 5 minus 4 and 8. 8 so what is a minus b dot a Fifty-four. What is the answer? Not zero. What is the answer? Seventy-seven. Yeah. Yes. So you see that option four is option four is correct, and option three is incorrect. Okay. Fine. Yes, okay. ma'am. now let us look at exercise 2 now in an orthogonal set the norms of all the vectors are equal is this true no ma'am if it is orthonormal then it is true but only for orthogonal set is it is not true for example consider this vector are they orthogonal yeah yes yes, yes ma'am They are orthogonal, but what about their norms? Under root two, under root two. Yeah, you see that the norm is square root of two, so it is not a. Uh, so here, okay, in this case, you see they are having a equal yes. norm. We we have to take some other example here. Yeah, basically, it will be the same thing. Yeah, what is the example? Uh, one you just solved. This one. Yes. Okay. I did not calculate what is norm A and norm B, but uh, I hope uh, in that case it is true. So they are orthogonal, but uh, the norm of the vectors are not equal. Please verify this using this previous example. Okay. Maybe I will write check for previous example. check with the previous exercise okay and option 2 in an orthogonal set the vectors are linearly independent is this true true ma'am true yes yeah. ma'am in an orthogonal set the vectors are linearly dependent no ma'am right okay If the columns of an n by n coefficient matrix A comprises the individual vectors of an orthogonal set in R n, then there must be a unique solution to the system A x is equal to B. What is your idea about this? When does a system A x equal to B first of all will have a unique solution? What are the properties of A in that case? Ma'am, the system is linearly independent. Not the system. Can you, ma'am? When we have the, the vectors, they are linearly independent. Yeah, you are almost correct. So you are either have the uh, so you are having n by n. So either the rows or columns of the matrix should be linearly independent. 
so in that case you know that the system will have a unique solution right yes ma'am now yes. given yes, that now it is given that the columns are orthogonal vectors if the columns are orthogonal what can you say about the columns of a they are linearly dependent yes so you know that columns of a are linearly independent so this tells you that ax equal to b must have a unique solution okay fine so again the same question they are giving no solution which is incorrect obviously the determinant of a square matrix formed by a set of orthogonal vectors in rn is zero ma'am can you repeat option no. can i repeat which part option 4 option 4 see option 4 it is given that you are having a matrix n by n matrix where let us say the columns are c1 c2 cn okay it is given that this c1 c2 cn forms an orthogonal set now what do you know about orthogonality implies independence yeah linear independence so now if it is linearly independent what do you know about the solutions of ax is equal to b unique solution yeah this will have a unique solution got it yes okay okay the similar argument for option 6 now in option 6 you are given that a determinant of a square matrix formed by a set of orthogonal vectors so you are having an vectors set of vectors it is orthogonal so if it is orthogonal you know it is linearly independent if it is linearly independent what do you know about the determinant of a determinant should be 0 right 0 so option 6 is it correct or incorrect incorrect yeah. incorrect a set of n vectors can never form an orthogonal basis in r n minus 1 true ma'am yes ma'am yes right because you know that any orthogonal set in r n minus 1 can have maximum how many vectors n vectors n vectors r n minus 1 it should be n minus 1 then right yes ma'am oh okay. yes ma'am so sorry yeah this is correct only so these are the correct options so is exercise too clear it is completely based on the properties so if you are having a clear understanding about the concepts you should be able to have the all the correct answers here so is exercise too clear for everyone yes ma'am yes yes ma'am uh yeah. option 7 can you is it correct or yeah a set of n vectors can never form an orthonormal orthogonal basis in rn minus 1 n vectors means okay, they okay. cannot be first of all linearly independent right yes yes yeah thank you now tell me about option 1 True. True, true right yes 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 option 2 option 2 also true false option 3 true false false not false you don't have to verify anything yeah what about r3 what about this set here yes it is Scalar multiples. Yes, ma'am. Scalar multiples means not linearly independent, right? Yes, ma'am. Option four is incorrect. So, so this is again. Yeah. Doesn't imply that ortho. See, orthogonal implies linear independence. So, if something is not linearly implies. independent, that should yes, imply not orthogonal, right? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes. Fine. Find a vector in R four that is orthogonal to the subspace spanned by these two vectors with respect to the dot product. 
So what is the subspace spanned by these two vectors? A plane. OK, so how do you write it? Ax plus by plus dy. Suppose, yeah, suppose this is two, suppose it's v. So what is span of u comma v? How do you write this? It is the set of all? A into u plus b into v. A. Yeah. Where a and b are varying in r. Now what is this? Is this correct? Yes. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, which of this following is orthogonal to any vector here? So let us start with the first one. So, ma'am, instead of one, doing that, we can also do it like this, right? Uh, so we will take the first element of the span vector, the spanning set, and then mm -hmm. multiply it by all the options and see if if the inner product is zero or not. See, in that case, you have to check for two vectors, whether this is uh, orthogonal to yes, both the vectors. That is also fine. Or you can check for just the dot product of these two vectors. Anyway, it's fine. Okay? Fine. So what is this equal to? A minus A minus B plus B. Is this equal to zero? Yes, ma'am. So is this orthogonal? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes, yes ma'am. <coughs> OK, option two. No, ma'am. Not equal to zero. No, no, zero. Okay, fine. And uh, what about minus one, 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 one? What is the answer? No. What about this one? It's also not. Okay. Fine. So up to this, what we have seen, we have seen what is orto, what is mean by orthogonal vectors, and then we have seen what are orthonormal vectors, and orthogonality implies linear independence, and then we saw what is an orthogonal basis, and then what is the importance about orthogonal basis? To find the constant of system of linear equation. Yeah. So whenever you are a, writing a, a random vector as a linear combination of the basis, you don't have to do big calculations for the coefficients. So each coefficient is inner product v comma v i. Right. So up to this we have seen. So the next concept here is projections. So what does mean by projection first of all? So this is a very common Fair problem. Enough. Maybe you have. Yeah, physics, maybe you have seen. So like shadow problem, right? So you are mm -hmm. having some, uh, uh, maybe some problem. pillar or whatever. And if there is a light falling and what is the shadow, if you are having a shadow, so what is this length and all these things you will be doing, right? So the projection is something similar to that. So here, remember, whenever we are talking about projection, we always talk about orthogonal projection. What is mean by orthogonal projection? We are looking at the foot of the perpendicular. OK? So let A and B be two vectors in R2. So you are having a vector A, you are having a vector B. OK? We want to find the point nearest to B on the line. So this is the line L, which is passing through A and the origin. So you want to find the point which is nearest to this point B on L. So what gives you the nearest point? Perpendicular distance. Yeah. So the perpendicular 
the foot of the perpendicular will give you the nearest point right so now how to find this foot of the perpendicular that is what we call as the projection of this vector b onto a so now this point is what you called the projection of b onto a that small okay. b or that capital b vector see when you are talking about the points it is a and b and when you are talking considering it as a vector it is small a and small b that's all okay fine yes okay so the nearest point will be the foot of the perpendicular drawn from the point b to the line l okay so to solve this problem in this perspective of vectors we will use the concept of inner products okay <clears throat> To find the length of the vector v, which is the foot of the perpendicular from b to the line l. So we have to find what is this length. Okay. So once we know what is this norm v, we can determine v. This is because, why is that so? So suppose let us call this vector as v. So once we know norm v, they are saying we can find v. How is that so? C. B and A are lying on the same line. Yes or no? Yes. Yes, ma'am. So it means what? One is a scalar multiple of the other. Right? So you know that V is equal to alpha times of A. And so norm V is equal to norm V equal to alpha times norm A. So alpha can be determined by using norm V and norm A. So you know what is V from this alpha. So finding norm V is what is important here. Once we know this, then we can easily find what is V. Okay. So. But what about the coordinates of V? Okay, that is what we mean by finding V. Okay. So V is given by norm V times of A by norm A. Okay. So it is norm V times A by norm A. So norm V is equal to norm b cos theta how did we get norm b is equal to norm b cos theta what is cos theta so if this is theta what is cos theta adjacent by hypotenuse now what is your adjacent here norm b below mm -hmm. and this is norm b right so norm b by norm b so that is why you get norm v is equal to norm b cos theta so norm b norm v is finding norm v is nothing but finding norm b into cos theta so it means you should know what is the angle between these two vectors a and b and you already know how to find angle between these two vectors given a and b you know the formula we have seen this in the very beginning of today's right yeah yes ma'am so Finding V means, so V is, you see, it is inner product A comma B by inner product A comma A into A. So how did we get this? From all this calculation we have done so far, you just substitute all this here. You get inner product A comma B equal uh, by A, inner product A comma A into A. So what is the first step we have done here? Norm B into cos theta. Norm B into cos theta, you have substituted this value here. Okay, and what is the next step you have done? Norm B cos theta. Why there is an A by norm A here? Because that V is that A by norm A from above definition. I'll okay, so this is norm V. So this part is norm V. Okay, and this is A by norm A, right? And you have now inner product A comma B. By norm A squared, norm B and norm B gets cancelled out. So you have in a product A comma B by in a product A comma A into A. So to find the length of the vector B, which is the foot of the perpendicular from B to the line uh, to the line. So what is it you have to do? So to find the vector, not the length. So it is nothing but in a product A comma B by A comma A into A. Okay. So you see, if you are having A, B, 
you know this is the foot of the perpendicular so here l is nothing but the projection of a onto b okay so here you see that ol is nothing but norm a into cos theta right so according to a dot b definition this is norm a norm b cos theta now ol is norm a cos theta so you can rewrite this as a dot b by norm b so this is another way of seeing it that's all okay so anyway the definition is again the same so it is inner product a comma b by norm a into a okay I'm up, upper side no, it is norm A, but here it is norm B right? in the denominator. What happens? In the above definition, it was norm A in the denominator. So this, is project, this is projection. Okay, here the terminology is just different. Projection of B on the vector A. So this is projection of A on the vector B. Okay, ma'am. Okay, clear. Whatever on which we are finding the projection onto that goes into the denominator. Yeah, yeah. So this is actually not exactly the length of the projection. So this is the length. So this is what is the distance OL. Okay. So better uh, we don't consider the length here. So this is just OL, not the projection. So this is norm of the vector. Right. And then you have to multiply it with here in this case a okay it's the same you can do uh, think of in case of r3 also suppose b is a point whose shortest distance from the plane generated by so what is the plane generated by these two points x y plane so if you consider the x y plane now what is the shortest distance what is the point Whose shortest distance from the plane to this point? How do you calculate? Again, it is the projection of B onto this plane. Now, how do we do this? So now we are going to look at the general scenario. So if you have any vectors in any inner product space and you have a subspace, okay. So now you see that this plane is a subspace. What about this line passing through origin? Is this also a subspace? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So in general, we can talk about projection of a vector on a subspace. Okay. So the projection of V onto W is the vector in W. Always the projection will lie on the subspace, right? Because we are yes, putting onto the subspace. So that can yes. be determined if you have an orthonormal basis. So first you need an orthonormal basis. Once you have an orthonormal basis, then the projection of V onto W is simply summation I equal to 1 to N in the product VI comma VI into VI. What happened in this case? Projection of B along A. So what is that formula we saw there? In a product A comma B. Now, how can you compare this and this? That we are taking orthonormal basis. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, so, what and is W first of all here? W is a plane. No. Line. Oh, right? This is your W. Yes. Right? And for this W, what is an orthonormal basis? You are having A here. So how do you con construct an orthonormal basis? 1, 0, 0, 1. A is one vector in W. How will you construct an orthonormal basis for W? Inner product of? Correct? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay, so now this is what is your V1. Okay, now what is projection of projection of any vector V onto W according to this definition? 
you are having only i equal to only one so you don't need summation in a product v comma w v k v1 into v1 and v1 is nothing but a by norm a did you get back the same yeah if you put yes. uh, p in place of v yeah you all yes. understand what is going on <clears throat> yes yeah so can projection of, it, yeah can so you repeat ma'am yeah yeah <clears throat> see what is projection of b on a this is the formula now what is the w corresponding here w is the line passing through a and origin okay now how do you construct orthonormal basis from a given vector here you divide by the norm since only one vector is there you don't have to verify whether you are having orthogonal vectors or not only one vector case so nothing much to verify you just have to make the vector no orthonormal so you divide by its norm next i you just apply it in this formula this is what you get and when you substitute b in place of v you get back this equation that's all i'm just asking you to compare how did this come from here okay is this same or different that's all i i just wanted to see because we started from here and now you are having a different format i just wanted you to understand it is nothing but the same okay why that summation is there like in that projection yeah because here you see this line is of dimension 1 and so only one vector is sufficient for the span of, spanning of the subspace but here w is a subspace of dimension n so you need to consider all these vectors so like in r3 it was uh, going on a plane so we need yes. both that uh, projection yes. exactly on x and on y so to get exactly. that okay okay Fine. and since it is orthonormal so norm is one so we there is no denominator yeah denominator is gone because the denominator is actually just one okay okay fine so this is a very important formula please remember this so this is a very important formula here ma what is the importance of projection okay what is the importance of projection see projection what we are doing here is orthogonal projection see orthogonal projection comes under what is called as isometric projections okay so these isometric projections are uh, very important when it comes to computer graphics or computer visions in constructing maybe uh, this uh, video games and all so there what happens so the same image you maybe you take any game i don't know exactly which game to refer so you will be able to rotate certain things right in games so maybe you will be able to view the same thing from different directions you may be able to look at the projection of certain things in a different angle maybe the stars you see from the side and then you see from the top and then you see from some other side so in all the ways the same image should should be there so how is those how are those constructed in behind each of this whenever you are doing some rotations or movements you are doing some kind of transformations in each place so this is one uh, example i am giving i am not able to give all the possible uh, scenarios here this is one scenario where you see that the uh, maybe you can see uh, what do they what do they call computer engineering design or drawing i don't know exactly what is the terminology so there what is that they do the same image how does it look from different direction so there also this kind of projections come so there are several different projection orthogonal projection is one specific type of projection okay so this has uh, definitely lot of um, uh, application so when it comes to design yeah how is it using data science data science okay in data science if you take orthogonalization or, or orthonormal basis when you have it you have uh, okay construction of uh, orthogonal uh, when you are having on ortho uh, orthogonal set you are having your easier diagonalization so diagonalization gives you a very important uh, aspect of Uh, reducing a complete system into a, uh, just a simple diagonal matrix 
okay so how does the diagonalization come into the picture all those things maybe it is an alphonse calculus but once when you are having an orthogonal matrix orthogonal matrix you can diagonalize not just orthogonal matrix there are many types of matrices which can be diagonalized so orthogonalization is one such uh, case okay so when you are able to diagonalize a system means you are just reducing a very big matrix it may be 100 by 100 matrix it may be any sparse matrix but when you are able to diagonalize them it is going to be just a diagonal matrix then solving that system is going to be very easier okay so what is diagonalization yes. it comes under a similarity matrix i told you already i guess so what is mean by diagonalization if you are having some matrix and if you are having this form where this is a diagonal matrix then a and d are similar matrices you know what are the common properties of similar matrix there are many common properties for similar yes. matrix so when you are a. able to write a matrix in this form then you can say that this matrix is diagonalizable okay so orthogonal yes. matrices have such properties okay Observe that V1, V2, Vn is a randomly chosen orthonormal basis for W and hence projection of V onto W is independent of the chosen orthonormal basis. The projection of a vector onto a subspace does not change with the choice of a basis, right? Obviously, the projection should not, should not change whatever is the basis you are considering because for the same space, how many bases can you have? Infinite. Right. Yeah. So whatever basis you choose, the and you put it in this formula, that should not change the projection. Okay. Yeah, it means like the shortest distance cannot change. However, yeah. We do. Yeah. Okay. So always remember, projection of a vector onto a subspace W is the nearest vector satisfying this property. Right. It is the. So if you take the distance between these two points, that should have the shortest length comparing to the distance between any other uh, vectors in that space. Okay, so this is another important property. Okay, fine. What is the projection of V onto W if V belongs to You are already in the in that space W. Now you are projecting again onto W. What will you get? Zero. Zero. See. Plus one zero. See, let me ask you in this way. Suppose you are having this line. Okay. And you are having some vector here. You are projecting this vector onto this line. So where where will you where will the foot of the perpendicular will lie? Where the vector, where is itself? There itself, right? Yeah. It's not going to move anywhere. Yeah. So what is the answer here? Norm of V. It's just V, right? It yes. is norm V is going to tell the length. So V is the actual vector itself, right? Okay. You got it? Yes. Okay. Fine. Let V equal to R2 and W be the line. Y is equal to X. The projection of 1 comma 2 onto W is how do you calculate? What is the base ortho orthonormal basis for this subspace? What is the subspace? First of all, W is equal to y is equal to x. Yeah. So it means set of all x comma x. Now what is an orthonormal basis? Can you find any element from W? 1 comma 1. 1 comma 1. Okay. Now, what is the norm of this vector? 2. Root 2. 1. Oh, sorry. Root 2. Root 2. Now, according to that formula, so let us call this V. What is the projection of V onto W? Inner product V comma V1 into V1, right? That is a formula. Right? Yes, yes ma'am. Can you calculate it and tell me now? Yes. 
maybe one of you can try it with a different basis Maybe you can choose some other vector, maybe 3 comma 3, minus 1, minus 1 comma minus 1 or any other vector. Everyone should get the same answer finally. And that last V1 is the multiplication. Right? Yeah, yeah. This is scalar, scalar multiplication with V1. So what is the answer? 3 over 2. One go. 3 comma 3, 3 by root 2, 3 by root 2. So, or 3 by 2, sorry. So, it is just 3 by 2, 3 by 2. All right? Yeah? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Let V is equal to R3 and W is equal to set of all X comma Y comma Z such that X plus Y is equal to 0. What is the projection of 2 comma minus 2 comma 0? What is the projection of 2 comma 1 comma 3? First, what is the basis for W? How do you find a basis for W? X minus X and Y. Okay. So X minus X and Z, let us say. So X comma Z in R. Now, what is the basis for this? How do you find a basis? One X times one, of? One, zero. One, comma minus one, comma zero. Zero, zero, one. Okay. So now, you know that these two vectors will form a basis. Let us call this U1, U2. Now, what is your V1? U1 by norm U1. What is norm U1? One comma minus one root two. And what is uh, norm u two? One. One, z, one comma one. one. Okay. So now you see that v one and v two will form an orthonormal basis. So always the first step in projection is finding orthonormal basis. After finding the orthonormal basis, you have to write the formula. What is the formula? V, V1. Oh. Yeah. Now, yes. your, if your V is this, what is your answer? If your V is this, what is your answer? You have to find. Calculate and tell me. Then these U1 and U2 should be perpendicular. Yeah. Definitely. Yes, ma'am. Are they perpendicular? Yeah, they are yeah. orthonormal basis. Yes, so mm. Ma'am, actually in the above question, like uh, before this before this mm -hmm. question, mm -hmm. the projection question, I didn't understand how, why is the uh, projection equal to V. Mm -hmm. above and above this one? No, ma'am, the above one. This one? Yeah, what, uh, what is the projection of uh, a V um, with respect to W? See, first of all, projection takes any vector projection of V onto W. What does this do? What does this do? It takes any vector to it takes any vector to which space? Tell me, what is the formula for projection? It is the scale, linear combination of Vi's where Vi's are the basis elements for W. Linear combination of the basis of W will result in a vector in? W. W. So always projection of any vector should be in? 
Tell me, it should be in, in W in W in this case. Right? So now what is the projection of V onto W when V is itself in W? Your V is already in W. Yes, so where are you going to project? It is going, it is already there in W. There is nothing to project, right? Yes, ma'am. So it is the same. Oh, yes, got it, got it. Okay, fine. Now, using this that property, where does this vector lie? This should lie in W. So is there anything to calculate for A? No, ma'am. So no. the projection of? 2 comma minus 2 comma 0 onto W is again 2 comma minus 2 comma 0. But what about this vector? We have to calculate for that. Yes. This one you need to calculate because it is not in this space. So calculate it using this formula. Okay. So calculate and tell me the answer. Ma'am, is it uh, 1, 1 by 2 minus 1 by 2, 3? I don't have the answer. Yeah, tell me your answer. 1 by 2? Minus 1 by 2, 3. And 3? Yes, ma'am. Okay, let us check. So, 1 by 2 minus 1 by 2, 0, right? So, it should be 3. Yeah, correct. Correct. Did you all get this answer? Yeah? Yes or no? No. This is not a difficult one. You should be able to do this problem. I have given the solution anyway. So how to do this? Is this clear at least? Yeah? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So is the concept we are the concepts we have seen so far clear to everyone? Yeah? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So yes, ma exercise. Two, you can do on your own. So maybe I'll give this as a homework. Okay. And then you will see the properties of projection maybe in the next session. So properties of projection. And then also you have to see what are orthogonal transformations and matrices. Maybe that is for the next session. Okay. Fine. Ma'am, activity problem. Yeah. What is that? 7.1 7.1 okay just give me a minute just uh, read the question till i open it
What is the question? Question number six. Yeah, just read the question. Wait. Choose the correct option if determinant of A or determinant of B is non zero, then A, B, and B, A are similar. Okay. If A, B, and B, A are similar, and determinant of A is non zero, and B also. We have determinant of A or determinant of B. B. We have done this in class, right? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Then why are you asking here? We have done this in class. Any other questions you have? Please check the previous sessions, live streaming session. You just see. Ma'am, I have doubt in graded assignment week seven. Question number eight. Yes, tell me. Uh, Ma'am, is let V is equal to R two be a vector space. Just give me a minute. I'm opening it. Yeah. Ma'am, where is previous live session? All the previous lecture, it is there in the YouTube playlist, or you can look at the notes. I have given the folder, uh, share the folder in the Google Sheet link. Uh, Google Sheet, I have given the folder link. Yeah. Ma'am, please open. Where? Okay. okay, you want to see where? Okay. We are in week eight. It's good that you at least get to know now. Just give me a minute. I'm opening the portal. I'm in the calendar. Uh, there is a uh, no link in one of the session. Yeah, calendar also you have link. Uh, but in one of the session, there is no link. So which session? Can you tell me? Maybe I forgot to add. I will add it now. Monday, eleven. Uh, it is arithmetic session, right? Uh, I yeah. Don't... I guess it was arithmetic session. I will add it. Okay. Thank you for the information. I'll add it. So whenever it come, um, yeah. Please open. Yeah, yeah. Week seven, uh, graded assignment. Okay, I opened. Which question? Eight. Eight. It is. Um, yeah, you have a vector space. Consider two inner products defined as. Yeah, if inner product a comma b comma four comma three is thirty five and four comma three is sixty. Find the value of a plus two b. This question, right? Yes, yes, ma'am. So, what is your doubt here, ma'am? Can you please give the overview of this question? How to solve? Okay, so there is nothing much. Uh, it is just solving some system of uh, equations. Okay, so let me write it here. Yes, ma'am. I knew it. Uh, there is a two equations are formed by these. Yeah. Value in a given question. Yeah. So you have inner product x1 comma x2, y1 comma y2 is equal to x1 x2 minus x1 y2 minus x2 y1 plus 4 x2 y2, right? No, right? Plus 4 y1 y2. Plus 4, oh sorry. Yes, plus 4 y1 y2. y2. Right. Now it is given that inner product x1 comma x2 comma what is that vector given to you? Uh, inner product 4 comma 3. Maybe a b here. So 4 comma 3. You just substitute it here. What is the answer given? 35 or what is that? Uh, that In my 35. question, there so is 35 a is equal to. Well, it's different for April, everyone. Yes. Yeah, so you have 4A. So this is your Y1, Y2, and X1, X2. So A times 3A minus 4B 
plus what is y1 y2 1 y1 y2 is 4 3 is 12 12 plus 12 into 4 again 48 okay so now you have 3a minus 4b plus 48 equal to 35 so you will simply have 3a minus 4b is equal to 35 minus 48 okay so similarly you will obtain another set of equation from the other inner product so you will have okay, two equations okay, and then you are going to solve and get a b that's all okay okay, okay? fine well, can you go to the page Thank number you. 10 of this slide which you have okay page number 10 uh uh below it ma'am which uh, no no this one this. uh go above sir. uh one more that yes yes ma'am yes uh this ma'am uh the last line c1 v1 c2 v2 i didn't get this thing which one which you have uh, wrote by yourself in the last this one uh above this yeah this yeah. one yeah 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 so what we have done, we have simply split this uh, sum, right? What is bilinearity property? So bilinearity property is C times of V comma W is inner product C comma V comma W. C into V comma W. And inner product U plus V comma W is U comma W plus V comma W. We have combined this two to split this term. So, for example, you suppose you are having only two terms. How do you split? So, C1, V1 into VI, right? So, using this property. Yes or no? Yes. So, for example, so maybe let us call this one, let us call this two. So, by two, you can split this as yes or no yeah yes and then again applying one you get right so now you have more than two terms so you are applying it for all the n terms okay Okay, ma'am. Fine. Okay, so I hope the concepts we have discussed is clear for everyone here. Yeah? Okay. Yes, How many uh, lessons of week 8 uh, is covered in this lesson? There is uh, one more uh, uh, session for week 8. Okay, and ma'am, this uh, the remaining topic in this uh, PDF which you have opened. Yeah. Is the only remaining, or there is something else? Mm, I have to check. What is there? No, there are more things. So I did not cover uh, orthogonal transformation and orthogonal matrices at all. So that is not covered in this PDF. Okay. Ma'am. Yeah. Where is the solution of activity? That is uh, something discussed in the TA sessions, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay, okay then. So I guess uh, we can wind up today's session then. Uh, yeah. Uh, the activity questions answered.